Hey guys, it's Hunter. Welcome back to another episode of Ask a Fish. This is a bit of a different one. This is a series where I usually answer the questions you guys leave on Discord about anything and everything guitar related, or we talk about the newest gear releases of the week. But today I want to focus in on something specific. Today I want to have a discussion on the state of YouTuber guitar brands because I've been getting a lot of questions and comments about some recent guitar news and this is a particularly interesting evolving space to keep an eye on. Guitarists tend to be very traditional, have very strong legacy brand loyalty, but we live now in a digital age and perceptions change very quickly. So if you go in to enjoy the video, slap a like on it, that actually really helps out with the wacky and wild YouTube algorithm and let's take a closer look at the state of YouTuber guitar brands. Let's start with the OG. Chapman guitars, man, they just cannot catch a break. We just talked about Rabia Massad and Rob Scallon, two of their high profile artists leaving. And this week in bad news for Chapman guitars is that their newly announced premium high-end UK workshop series, the successor to the ill-fated British workshop series, has already hit a big snag. According to a statement posted on Instagram, quote, it's looking unlikely UK guitar builders will be able to fulfill any more orders for the companies it supplies, including Chapman UK Workshop Series. They continue on to say, fortunately, we're already in dialogue with an alternative experienced high-end guitar builder with a view to being able to resume production in the next four to six weeks. No concrete details on who the new builder is, so that seems very optimistic. It feels like they're putting so much unnecessary pressure on themselves. It almost seems like they're rushing it when this is not something that should or even needs to be rushed. To Chapman Guitar's credit, they seem focused on doing right by their customers and offered everyone waiting on a UK Chapman either a full refund or the opportunity to wait for the new production. And it's a shame, man, because they look like very cool guitars. They've been trying to launch a UK built premium line since like 2018, and it's just like not happening. So. We're just gonna have to wait and see what happens. People are gonna latch on to the Chapman guitars part of the story because yeah, at this point I want to believe, but we'll believe it when we see it and people actually get their UK built Chapman guitars. But the other part of the statement really matters too. Unlikely UK guitar builders will be able to fulfill any more orders for the companies it supplies. Like what happened there? Did they quit the OEM business? Did they quit doing business altogether? Did they just quit Chapman guitars? What's happening with the associated PJD guitars? If you're not familiar with them, they seem part of the same company. They make some really nice looking UK built guitars for very reasonable prices. They have this really cool Les Paul Special Telecaster hybrid thing. Is supply chain too messed up for them to continue? Do they lose key employees? Did Gibson sue them into oblivion? Honestly, there's so many questions. We're just gonna have to wait until more info comes out. But like, if this is not a Chapman exclusive thing, this is just hilariously bad luck at this point. It's almost parody. It's like someone put a voodoo curse on Chapman guitars, man. Remember back in like 2016, 2017, they just launched the new Pro and Standard series, especially the Pro series. I still have my ML2 Pro. I I love that guitar. Great f***ing specs. They were outspecking LTDs and even Schecter at the time. Lumen lays, highly rolled fingerboard edges, stainless steel frets, neck through. Oh, and not a veneer, but a proper thick carved flame maple cap. No one else was doing that for import guitars. No one even makes a single cut like that now. Back then it was nothing but good vibes around Chapman guitars. In hindsight, 2018, the British Standard Series announcement that was the turning point. The way that was announced with all this fanfare at NAMM and then just months later disappeared like a fart in the wind was just, it was just bad vibes. There was no communication, no statements, no nothing. They just ceased to exist. It was up until that point, it felt like a homegrown community brand. You had all the votes so the community would decide what's the next model, what kind of specs would it have, what colors. There was a cast at Chapman Guitars, Rob, Lee, Rabia, Matt, that seemed accessible. And the way the British Standard Series was handled broke the community vibe because we didn't know what the hell was going on. And if you don't know what's going on, it's hard to feel like an involved community. Side note, they were actually selling old unsold British Standard Series guitars on eBay a few months ago 
for like 800 bucks. And I'm pissed that I missed out on that. And it's a shame this allegedly small delay has added to the high profile black cloud over Chapman guitars right now because it's completely overshadowed their other news, which is they've just updated their Korean made Pro Series M01 modern models and they actually look pretty sick. Comes in liquid teal metallic satin, cyber black satin, and Morpheus flip-flop gloss. Beveled top basswood bodies, three-piece roasted maple necks, Makassar ebony fingerboards, extra jumbo stainless steel frets, lumen lays, hip shot open gear locking tuners, and chug-tastic splittable Seymour Duncan sentient Pegasus humbuckers. Pretty stacked specs, and the teal blue one is looking particularly tasty. Even more so because every color is also available as a 26 and a half inch scale seven string, or as a 28 inch scale length baritone. Oh, <laughs> yes. Not sure yet if this means they're discontinuing the previous version. It's still listed on the Chapman website now as the M01 Pro Modern neck through instead of just the M01 Pro Modern. It'd be a shame if it left. I know it's an older model now, but no one else is making sandblasted ash imports with roasted maple neck through. That's objectively a six spec combo. And listen, every time there's a Chapman video, the comment section can turn into a complete sh show. I get it. There are a lot of legitimate reasons to dislike or to not support a certain brand, especially so when the brand is so closely tied to a parasocial dynamic, but you lose all credibility if you make arguments in bad faith or throw out points that just aren't true. One I see a lot is, oh, the Pro Series is so overpriced for the specs you get. What are you talking about? Like take the new M01 Pro, made in Korea, roasted maple neck, ebony fingerboard, stainless steel frets, lumen lays, USA hip shot open gear locking tuners, American made Seymour Duncan Pegasus sentient set. In today's market, that's a lot of spec for $11.59. Take a look on Sweetwater. They're not out specking them like they were in 2017, but that's competitive with what you're getting from Korean made LTDs or from Korean made Schecters. There was one dude in the comments that, no joke, said if you show up to a gig with a Chapman guitar, everyone will laugh at you. Like, dude, what? No one at a show cares what guitar you're playing. Listen, if you don't like Chapman guitars, just say that. If you're concerned about resale value, just say that. You don't like the infamous online power video. In fairness, that was weird. Just say that. You don't have to make up stuff to justify it. It just delegitimizes everything else you have to say. My point is, I don't know what's going on with Chapman guitars, man, but they've been a toxic topic for a while now. And it's such a big change from a time where it seems like they couldn't be stopped. The guitars are still really enjoyable, so they're not dying as some people claim. There's just so much drama around them that they cannot seem to shake. It goes to show that the biggest strength of a YouTuber brand can also be its curse. But you know what's really enjoyable without the drama? Today's sponsor. Ridge. Sharp right turn, nailed that segue. And Ridge isn't just a sponsor, I've been using them for a couple of years now and I absolutely love it. There's no way I'm going back. I love the sleek modern form factor that can fit into your front pocket. The durable plates made of aluminum, titanium, or carbon fiber, or RFID blocking, and each wallet comes with a lifetime guarantee. You guys know, you've used traditional wallets. They get bulky with unused loyalty cards, old receipts, and that's just not practical for modern people and it doesn't happen with Ridge. They have over 30 colors and styles to choose from for yourself, and speaking from experience, they make fantastic birthday gifts for your hard to shop for friends. Their key case is the same concept, sleek and durable, but for your keys, no more jangling. They have over 50,000 five-star reviews. So if you wanna see why so many people are switching over to the Ridge wallet and love it, head on over to ridge.com slash agufish. And for you guys, if you use my code agufish, you'll get 10% off your order and free worldwide shipping. Link will also be in the description. And of course, clicking help support the channel by letting them know that I sent you. And while you're checking that out, let's get back into guitars. And all this is in complete contrast to Ola England Solar, who coincidentally launched about five years ago and who seem to drop a new model every like three days. Speaking of which, I gotta hit Solar up. I really wanna try one of their seven string ever tuned aged natural T-types. Looks so sick, gonna make something happen. If you're part of the 8,393% of people not subscribed yet, make sure you do that now so you don't miss it. But pretty much simultaneously to Chapman announcing a delay and builder change to their premium master built line, this week, Ola England announced that Solar Guitars Europe is now a thing. Their Europe Master Series will be like the UK Chapman concept, higher-end, hand-built versions of their beloved 
pointy ass overseas models that made him popular with metal players. In the announcement video, Ola showed off two models, a Solar A with a roasted flame maple neck and fingerboard, oh the figuring looks so good, which he'd had custom built for his 40th birthday. It was supposed to be a one-off build, but it turned out so sick, it convinced the team to launch Solar Guitars Europe and make these master builds available to the public. But so far, only the other guitar shown is available on their website, the XF6FRFSB. Jesus Christ, is that a real guitar name? <laughs> That's obnoxious. So we actually got two announcements in one, premium European made Solar guitars and the Solar X shape is a real thing. The European Master Type X and Solar Burst is going to have hand-wired Solar Modern humbuckers with brass-mounted countersinks, which I assume will be similar voice to the Duncan Solar pickups in the import models, CTS Pots and Switchcraft Toggle, Schaller Mini Locking Tuners, Schaller Lockmeister Tremolo, a Kill Switch, Lumen Lace Super Blue Side Dots, 10 to 12 inch compound radius Rich Light, Fingerboard, Mother of Pearl Solar Inlay, and what appears to be a proper Flame Maple Cap. So several key spec and aesthetic upgrades versus their import models in addition to just more premium build quality and a higher price tag. These are listed at $3,800, which is a lot, but I have a feeling these are actually gonna do quite well for Solar. Now it's much more difficult to go from affordable imports to higher end premium builds as Chapman is finding out. The only big success story I can think of in the guitar world is Ibanez. They started with affordable copies of American guitars, and now they make some of the most highly regarded custom shop guitars hand-built in Japan. But it's much easier to start at the higher end and then introduce more affordable models like Fender did with Squire or PRS with the SE line. Going the other way, there's a reason Toyota created Lexus. You know what I mean? Right now though, there's so much goodwill around Solar. And in the announcement video, they actually showed bodies and necks and everything in the production phase. They showed part of the workshop. There's a video of the workshop coming. I mean, they seem prepared. They have everything in place before the announcement. It also helps that they're not going the custom built to order route so they can actually build them in advance. And the imports are gonna to continue to be their bread and butter. Solar Guitars Europe is gonna be more of a status symbol that gives them legitimacy. For anyone still harboring doubts, this helps prove that YouTuber guitar lines are more than just expensive merch. And they might not view each other as competitors necessarily, but the internet definitely directly compares what Solar is doing versus what Chapman is doing. They're started by two big OG guitar YouTubers with legitimate brands that are sold all over the world. They both have infinity type logos at the 12th fret. And it's kind of crazy, they're both at that level where they're launching premium custom shop lines but the way in which they're being handled is almost a direct reflection of public opinion. Also, kind of crazy what a five-year difference can make in that court of public opinion. Either way, especially given the world situation right now, it'll be interesting to see how the premium European built lines will fare. If the execution is good, there is a market for them. The capabilities of parasocial relationships. Toman, you hear that? Harley Benton's cool and all, but you wanna create a premium brand together? Let me know, bros. And speaking of new brands, out of nowhere, Badlands Guitar Company. Oh my God, it's so fucking 80s. It's a new brand that just launched both Phil McKnight and the Tone King are co-owners. The goal of the company is, in their own words, your connection to the 80s guitar experience. Essentially, modern build quality and modern components on high performance, American made 80s style guitars. Kind of like Kramer on steroids. Even the logo has a Kramer-esque font. They announced via Phil's YouTube channel that they'll essentially be doing limited drops. Once that batch is gone, it's gone forever. They say that's part of the fun, and it's also part of the sales tactic. But yeah, it is interesting because you literally have no idea what's dropping next except that it's gonna be hair metals. Their first release is called the GX1 Redline, which again, looks very Kramer-esque. Alder body, maple neck and fingerboard, pointy headstock. Key specs include their very own custom BGC M88 humbuckers, your choice of either a non-recessed Goto trem or a hardtail bridge, and the inclusion of a TKL hardshell case. These are meant to be the ultimate 80s shred machine, and Badlands Guitar Company is really selling the culture and experience as part of the purchase. To that end, the neck has been tinted, 
fingerboard edges aged to make it seem like it's been played, traded, gigged, and sat in various pawn shops for decades. The red stripes aren't decal or anything, they're all hand painted, which is just a further indication of the guitar's entire philosophy. It's a throwback to the good old days where MTV played real music and guitars were handmade in the US of A. The swag pack includes a DiMarzio Cliplock strap, magnetic Allen key from Floyd Rose, and a runway audio instrument cable. And then it's got a load of additional case candy, like a thank you card, signed QA hang tags, backstage pass, limited edition Badlands Redline poster, an A5 BGC document folder, and a signed certificate of authenticity. And going back to what Chapman got right back then, Badlands is trying to make you feel involved. You haven't just bought a guitar. You've bought into the journey with Phil McKnight and with the Tone King. People you know, people you support, and that's really cool. You know, last year I got a Gibson slash Les Paul Standard Limited 4 album edition, and the guitar was cool, no doubt, but opening that case for the first time, the slash pick tin, the vinyl record, the signed poster, playing the guitar is awesome, I love it, but the unboxing, was a special experience. It set the tone. Badlands understands that concept, and that's what they're doing here. And it's interesting too, because Phil McKnight basically frames Badlands as having a very similar origin to Solo Guitars Europe. A bunch of passionate friends coming together, making a guitar for themselves. Then when it was done, thinking, yo, this is badass, we should offer these to the public. You know, it's all very organic. Even the laser-focused aspect is very similar. Solar is a pointy metals brand Badlands is pure 80s hair metal. I say organic, but I have to roast the Tone King a little bit on the announcement video. Hello, rockers. I am proud to introduce you to Badlands Guitar Company. We're a US-based guitar company focused on building instruments of uncompromising quality, delivering superior value for the musician, and providing a unique customer experience. Lewis, buddy, what is going on with the robotic delivery, man? But Badlands has just started. It'll be interesting to see how they develop, what future batches will look like, and it'll be interesting to see what the YouTuber brand scene will look like in five years time. And it's got people talking now that supply chain is recovering. What is the YouTuber guitar brand scene gonna look like five years from now. Who's gonna be the next YouTuber guitar brand? No idea, or even if there will be one. I think any launch in the future is gonna look a lot like what Badlands is doing. Not necessarily at that premium price point or in that general 80s theme, but limited runs, hyper-focus on a certain niche. The guitar market is ridiculously competitive. Honestly, I don't know anyone else that actually wants to do it. Metal is pretty saturated. Maybe someone in the pop punk space, the country space, no idea. Either way, that is the state of YouTuber guitar brands at the beginning of 2023. A healthy combination of excitement and show much like the platform itself. But here's where I'll throw it to you. What do you think the future holds for YouTuber guitar brands? Any and all thoughts, leave them down below. And that'll do it for this extra rambly version of Ask a Fish. Massive shout out to the awesome patrons that make this and all the other content possible. If you wanna support the channel as well and get bonus extras, link in the description. You can also join as a YouTube member or grab yourself some merch that actually really helps out. Social media, affiliate, and Discord server links are in the description. As always, thank you so much for watching. You've been awesome and I will see you for the next video.